I come from a country of roads, a place called the United States of America, where the roads tie together 3,000 miles of desert and mountain and valley. Because of the automobile, Americans who live 100 miles from each other are as close neighbors as the man next door. Long before my time, the look of the landscape was already changing. Men were dreaming about new cities with long avenues and wide spaces to live in. These cities were planned. They were even built. But in miniature, only. Because this dream, like every other dream of a free people, was threatened, the men of my country went to war. The automobiles of the times of peace were stopped. They were stored away for the duration. A new kind of army mule on wheels was needed to keep up with the motor divisions that took to the highway. And that's what I was going to be. The job of figuring me out was given to the automobile industry. Every year, men like these had designed a new and more beautiful collection of cars. These new models were presented like debutantes at auto shows that were the social events of the season. In the hands of these experts, there was no telling just what I might turn out to be. A beautiful sedan, maybe, with all the gadgets and devices. A handsome roadster. Maybe a peacock. They worked on me and worked, and finally, here's what came out. Can this be an automobile, men wondered? Looks more like a four-wheel beetle, one of them said. No, I wasn't too proud of myself back there at the start when the army first looked me over. Then they sent me out on the road. They tried to drown my motor, but my ignition was set too high for that. They tried to break my back on roller coaster roads. But when I held together, it looked as if the army and I might somehow get along because they gave me a nickname. From the word general purpose, they took the G and the P. They called me Jeep. Hmm. It sounded more like a noise than a name. Then it really began. I was sent out on maneuvers. This army was getting tough. Could I keep up with them? Was I good enough? How did I know? All I could do was keep my fenders straight, my gears grinding, and hope for the best. And the things they asked me to do, like rivers, for instance. I had to be light enough to cross water in my own canvas tarpaulin. Lucky I didn't weigh more than 2,200 pounds. And it was lucky that I wasn't any bigger than 11 feet long and 5 feet wide and 3 feet high. Because when the outfit took to the air, they expected me to go right along with them. One day it'd be airplanes. The next it'd be a transport glider. And if I wasn't riding in them, I was pulling them up into the sky. Lucky I was 60 horsepower strong. The army was getting tougher, preparing itself for the big offenses that were coming. And I had to get tougher to keep up. I'll say one thing, no matter what they asked me to do, pull cannon, break my own road through the underbrush, 
or keep moving at better than 70 miles an hour, it was no worse than what my driver was ready to do himself. The American soldier and I got along fine. Like a good rider and a horse. We got to be pals. But even so, I had my doubts. Most of the machines around me had proved themselves in battle. I was still on probation. I did about everything a machine could do to stick with that army. I stood up to gunfire and mounted a gun of my own. I laid down smoke to hide the tanks that followed. I helped out wherever I could. I even learned how to splash across rivers. with a boat arrangement built around my middle. But I didn't know yet whether I was accepted until all of a sudden I found myself in mass production. It meant only one thing. I was a success. I was getting turned out one every two minutes. 30 Jeeps an hour. What do you think of that? All of a sudden, I found that I was a popular kind of character. I was marching right up there in front with the band. I was meeting movie stars, and we went out driving together. We sold war bonds right down the streets of Washington, D.C. itself. I was a success. I got all set to go traveling. They credited me up for shipment overseas to do the job I was built for. I was sent over by the thousands. And I traveled with the guy I liked best, my pal, the soldier. Wherever he goes, I go. And let me tell you, we land together on a lot of different shores. I went to work in the South Sea Islands. I fought mud in North Africa. I went sightseeing in Egypt. And in China, I teamed up with General Stilwell, with General Chenault and his flying tigers. I kept from freezing up in Alaska and from boiling down in Timor. I traveled with General MacArthur in New Guinea. I was a success. I hobnobbed with famous people, like Wendell Wilkie, with King George, and Queen Elizabeth. I went out with presidents. I was with Mr. Roosevelt in Casablanca. And I was part of the victory in North Africa. I was a success. But the thing that makes me a success most of all is this. I've made a friend. I mean the soldier. Wherever you see one of us, the other won't be far behind. And that goes for now, when we're fitting together, and for after the war, when we'll be building together. Because the rumor is going around that the Jeep is here to stay.